Hi everyone, welcome to today's video session. In previous video session, we discussed the structure of cilia and flagella. Cilia and flagella, their internal structure is same, but the functions are different and there are some differences also. We discussed in previous class. In today's video session, we are going to study the structure of centriole and basal body. Same will be applicable here also. Internal structure of centriole and basal body is same. But their functions are little different. Okay. So, we are going to study the structure of centriole and basal body. Basal body is also known as basal granule or it is also known as blepharoblast blepharoplast ok these are the another name for another names for basal body basal body is also known as basal granule or basal body is also known as blepharoplast ok let us see the structure. The structure of centriole and basal body. Centrioles are present in the centrosome. Centrioles are present in the centrosome. How they are present? Let us see. If you take the structure of a single centrosome, if you take the structure of a single centrosome, it has 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Each centrosome have 9 pericentriolar particles. They have 9 pericentriolar particles. What are these called? These are called peri centriolar particles. They are my pericentriolar particles. Now, inside these pericentriolar particles, no, there are two centrioles which are perpendicularly arranged. There are two centrioles which are perpendicularly arranged like this. Now, these two are called what? Centrioles. Okay, these two are called what? Centrioles. Here, centrioles are covered by pericentriolar particles. How many pericentriolar pericentriolar particles are present? There are nine pericentriolar particles. Why they are called? Peri means surrounding. Centriolar centrioles. As these particles are surrounding the centrioles, as these particles are surrounding the centrioles, they are called pericentriolar particles. Remember, centrioles are present inside a structure called centrosome. Each centrosome consists of what? Nine pericentriolar particles and two centrioles. Okay, now we are going to study the structure of this single centriole. How the centriole is looking like? Remember, centrioles are present inside the centrosome. Don't be confused between centrosome and centriole. Centrosome is the organelle in which there are nine pericentriolar particles, and inside the pericentriolar particles, there are two centrioles which are arranged perpendicular to each other. Now we are going to study about this structure, how it looks like. So how many centrioles are present? There are two centrioles. So in each cell, in each cell, how many centrioles are present? There are two centrioles. Now we are going to discuss the structure of this centriole. I hope you understood. What is centrosome? What is centriole? Centrosome is the structure which contains two centrioles. So this is the structure of a centrosome. Now we are going to study the structure of a 
single centriole. How this looks like. So if you see the structure of a single centriole, how it looks like. Now, we are going to discuss regarding centriole. So, there are two centrioles which are present like this inside the centrosome. Now, how this centriole looks like? Means, each centriole has micro tubules. Each centriole has a micro tubule. Now, we are going to study the structure of a centriole. This one we are going to study. Both their structures are same. Both the centriole structure are same. Now, each centriole is made up of micro tubules. And these microtubules are arranged in 9 plus 0 microtubular arrangement. It is 9 plus 0 microtubular arrangement. That means already you know, 9 microtubules are present in the peripheral region like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 microtubules are present in the peripheral region and 9 plus 0, that means at center there are no microtubules. At center there are no microtubules. This is called 9 plus 0 microtubular arrangement. When it comes to cilia and flagella, it is 9 plus 2 microtubular arrangement. That means 9 at periphery, 2 at center. Of course, there is an exception. There is a cilia called stereocilia. It has only 9 plus 0. We are already discussing that point. Now, each centriole is made up of what? Microtubules. Each centriole is made up of what? Microtubules. Now, what is the arrangement of those microtubules? It is 9 plus 0 microtubular arrangement. That means 9 microtubules at, are at the peripheral region and at center there are no microtubules at all. Now, I told you peripheral microtubules. Peripheral microtubules are how many? Nine. There is a microtubules are nine. Now, in this nine, each one is a triplet. Each one is a triplet. That means it is made up of. It is made up of three sub microtubules. I told you peripheral microtubules are nine. And I am saying in that nine, each one is a triplet. That means each one is made up of three sub microtubules like this. Three microtubules. One. Inner side. B is at center. 
C will be towards peripheral side. So each peripheral microtubule is made up of three sub microtubules A, B, C. Now just I am drawing here. It is A. Imagine it is A. This A is made up of 13 proto filaments. Same point we discussed in cilia and flagella also. A is made up of 13 proto filaments. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. A is made up of 13 proto filaments. A is made up of 13 proto filaments. Next, after A, there will be B. After A, there will be B. After B, there will be C. Okay? A is made up of how many proto filaments? 13 proto filaments. Whereas B is made up of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. B is made up of 10. C is also made up of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. In case of cilia and flagella, peripheral microtubule is not triplet. That is doublet. It contains only A and B. A contains 13 protofilaments. B contains 10 protofilaments. But here, each peripheral microtubule is a triplet. It contains three sub microtubules. A, B, C. A towards inside, B a center, C peripheral region. A contains 13 protofilaments, B contains 10 protofilaments, C contains 10 protofilaments. Now, these nine, these nine peripheral microtubules, these nine peripheral microtubules are made up of a protein known as tubulin protein. Okay? The nine peripheral microtubules are made up of a protein known as a tubulin protein. Okay? Now, for meat, they will ask the question. How many tubulin proteins are present? How many tubulin proteins are present in centriole? And another question, how many in centrosome? How many are present in centriole? How many are present in centrosome? Very simple. I told you, centriole is made up of nine peripheral microtubules. Okay, nine peripheral microtubules. Peripheral microtubules are made up of which protein? Tubulin protein. In each tubulin protein, there is A, B, C. That means, in each microtubule, there are three sub microtubules A and A, B, C. Now you understand the logic carefully. There are nine microtubules. In nine, there are three sub microtubules. That means what? In this one tubulin protein, in this one tubulin protein, in this one tubulin protein. That means in single peripheral microtubule, how many tubulin proteins are there? Three. In A, one tubulin protein. B, one tubulin protein. C, one tubulin protein. So three are there. No? In this three means total how many are there? Nine. So nine into three how much? Three. 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 Nine into three how much? Twenty-seven. So in each centriole there are twenty-seven tubulin proteins. Students, I hope you understood how we got the number 27. I told you, 
Centrion is made up of nine peripheral microtubules. Each peripheral microtubule is made up of three sub microtubules A and B. In each there is one tubule protein. That means what? In A one, B one, C one. Totally in each peripheral tubule, in each peripheral microtubule, there are three tubule proteins. No? Like that, how many are there? Nine. So nine into three, twenty-seven microtubules. So in each centriole, in each centriole, there are twenty-seven microtubules. Now the question is, how many tubule proteins are there in centrosome? Centrosome is the structure. In the centrosome, what I told you, there are two centrioles like this. In each centriole, twenty-seven means. In both centrioles, twenty-seven plus twenty-seven. Twenty-seven plus twenty-seven. It is fifty-four because each centrosome contains two centrioles. I hope you understood the logic here. Is it clear to you? So centriole is made up of nine plus zero microtubular anemone. Nine are at peripheral and zero is at center. Nothing will be there at center. Now in this line, each peripheral microtubule is made up of three sub-microtubules A, B, C. A towards center, B towards periphery, B to A towards inside, A towards inside, B towards center, C towards periphery. All these are made up of tubule proteins. Now in A, how many protofilaments are there? Thirteen. B, ten. C, ten. Totally, how many tubule proteins are there in single centriole? Twenty-seven. How you got? Centriole is made up of nine microtubules. No? In na, in each microtubule there are three sub-microtubules. A, B, C. In this one tubule, in this one tubule, in this one tubule. In a single peripheral microtubule there are three tubule proteins. So totally nine. Nine into three, twenty-seven. Okay, and the centrosome has two centrioles, no? so twenty-seven plus twenty-seven, fifty-four. Okay, I think you understood this point. Now, let us study the structure of centriole. Let us study the structure of centriole. How this centriole looks like? How this centriole looks like? Structure of centriole and structure of vessel body both are same. Once again, I will review. Centrosome has pericentriolar particles. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pericentriolar particles inside that two centrioles are present. Perpendicularly. Now this is called centriole. Now its structure we are going to study. Centriole structure and basal body structure almost the same. Internal structure is almost the same. We are going to study the structure of the centriole. Both the centriole structures are same. So this is centrosome. Inside the centrosome two centrioles are there. This is centriole centriole structure we are studying. Okay, and I told you, centriole has nine plus zero microtubular arrangement. No? So let me say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, nine peripheral microtubules. I'm drawing nine peripheral microtubules. This is one peripheral microtubule. One peripheral microtubule. Okay. I told you each peripheral microtubule is a triplet. No, it has A, B, C. A towards inside, B center, C periphery. Here also. One. To A, B, C. 
okay here also a b c here a b c a b c a b c a b c so how many are there like that nine must be there no one two three four five six seven eight nine so a b c a b c like this nine peripheral say micro tubules are there which are in the form of a b c a has 13 protofilaments b has 10 protofilaments c has 10 protofilaments okay so these are peripheral microtubules Nine peripheral micro tubules. Peripheral micro tubules. A and each peripheral micro tubule is a triplet. It has A, B, C. Okay, I told you how many tubulin proteins are there. It is one, two, three. One, two, three. Totally twenty-seven tubulin proteins. And yet center there are no micro tubules. Why? Because it is nine plus zero micro tubular arrangement. So at center there are no micro tubules, but there is a structure called hub. This is called central hub. Okay. So at center there is a central hub. So nine micro, nine peripheral micro tubules, central hub. Each my, each peripheral micro tubule is a triplet. Which, which, can, which contains three side micro tubules. A, B, C. Now, here, the A sub micro tubule of one peripheral micro tubule is connected to C sub microtubule of another peripheral microtubule in a clockwise direction. In a clockwise direction. That means, you see, this is one peripheral microtubule. This is one peripheral microtubule. This is another peripheral microtubule. Here. A sub micro tubule, B sub micro tubule, C sub micro tubule. This entire thing is peripheral micro tubule. In this entire peripheral micro tubule, each one is sub micro tubule. Here also, one peripheral micro tubule, A sub micro tubule, B sub micro tubule, C sub micro tubule. Now what I am saying is, A sub micro tubule of one peripheral microtubule is connected to C sub microtubule of another peripheral microtubule in clockwise direction, in this direction, not in this direction, like this. A sub microtubule of one peripheral microtubule is connected to C sub microtubule of another peripheral microtubule in clockwise direction. This is called AC linker. This is called AC linker. In clockwise direction, it will, they will be connected. Now let us see the diagram. This is A, 
S of micro tube of one place of the micro tube, this is C. Both will be connected like this in a clockwise direction. Next, A to C. A to C. A to C. Just I will rub this for our convenience. What is this called? Central hub. Okay, just I am rubbing it. Lateral will rub. A to C. 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 Okay. Now, here also. A to C. Now, this is called what? AC linker. This is called what? AC linker. What is AC linker? The A sub micro tubule of one peripheral micro tubule is connected to C sub micro tubule of another peripheral micro tubule. This connection is called AC linker. Okay? Now, next one, next very important point. Beneath every A sub micro tubule, Okay, beneath every A sub micro tubule, there is a dense material called X body. There is a dense material called X body. That means, again I will draw. A B C, right? A B C. Beneath the a sub micro tubule, there is a dense body. This dense body is called what? X body. This dense body is called what? X body. This is a dense material. It is made up of a dense material. Now let us see in the diagram. This is X body. X body. X body. X body, X body, X body, X body, X body, X body. Where do the X body is present? X body is present beneath the A sub micro tubule. So this is called X body. Now this time we will be here. X body. So, okay, beneath the yeah, beneath the every A yes, sub micro tubule, there is a X body. Now, in between two X bodies, that means A B C, A B C. This is X body. This is X body. In between the two X bodies. In between the two X bodies, there is another dense material called Y body. There is another dense material called Y body. Y body is present between the two X bodies. X, X, this is Y body. 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 So, in between the X bodies, there is a Y body. The Y body is also made up of a dense material. Okay? Now, the Y bodies are connected to AC linker. The Y bodies are connected to AC linker. Again, I will show you in the form of a diagram. This is a, B, C. A, B, C. This is X body. This is X body. Now it is going to be 
my body this is a cylinder now every white body is connected to a cylinder every white body is connected to a cylinder like this every white body is connected to a cylinder every white body is connected to ac linker okay so every white body is connected to ac linker next after that every x body is connected to central hub every x body is connected to central hub with the help of a radial spoke Every X body is connected to central hub with a radial spoke. That means it is peripheral microtubule ABC. This is another peripheral microtubule ABC. This is central hub. Imagine this is X body. This is X body. Every X body is connected to hub. Okay, with the help of a radial spoke. That means we can draw like this. This is X body, no? It will be connected like this. This is called radial spoke. Every X body is connected to central hub with the help of a radial spoke. How many radial spokes are present? How many X bodies are present? Those many radial spokes. How many X bodies? Nine X bodies. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine radial spokes are present. Okay. So this is the overall structure. Okay. This is the overall structure of a. This is the overall structure of a centriole. This structure is similar for basal body also. So this is the structure of the centriole. And remember, students, X body and Y body are also connected with each other. X body and Y body are also connected with each other, like this. X and Y are also connected with each other. X and Y are also connected with. Each other. Now, just once again, I will repeat the structure. Okay, listen. What I told you first: nine peripheral microtubules. One, nine will be there. Just I am reviewing the structure. If you have any doubt, just clarify that itself by seeing the structure again. Okay, I am saying there are nine. One, two, three, four. And draw again. This is one. This is another. Okay. This is radial. So this is central hub. Just I am not drawing all the structures. Just to remind you the labels. Just I am drawing roughly. Nine will be there. This is called central hub. Out of nine, this is A, B. This is one peripheral microtubule, A, B, C. A, B, C. A, B, C. Understood? Now what I told you, A will be linked with C. A will be linked with C. And what I have this structure as the link between A and C. It is called AC linker. Next, beneath A, X body. X body, X body, 
x body between x body who will be there y body y body is connected to ac linker okay x body is connected to hub this is called radial spoke now there is a connection between x and y also there is a connection between x and y also so on are you clear so now you see the structure carefully nine peripheral microtubules 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 nine each one is made up of three sub microtubules a b c a towards inside b center c towards peripheral a of one microtubule is connected to c of another microtubule in clockwise direction what is it called ac linker now beneath a there is x body this is called x body all x bodies are present beneath a all x bodies are present beneath a in between the x bodies there is y body okay there is a y body okay y body is connected to remember y body is connected to ac linker x body is connected to hub y body is connected to ac linker x body is connected to hub what is the structure by which x body is connected to hub that is called radial spoke for this there is no name okay the structure by which x body is connected to hub is called radial spoke and there is also a there is also a connection between x and y body there is also a connection between x and y body like this overall it gives the shape of a cart wheel overall this gives the shape of a cart wheel structure okay so this is about the structure of centriole and basal body so we study the structure of centriole and basal body both their structures are same but there are little differences there are little differences between centriole and basal body for example centriole is present near nucleus okay centriole is present near nucleus understood whereas the basal body okay the basal body may present anywhere where there is a cilia or flagella or you can say very simply centriole is present near nucleus basal body is present on plasma membrane so location centriole is present near nucleus basal body is present below plasma membrane it is present below plasma membrane for example if it is the plasma membrane just below the plasma membrane this basal body will be present okay next second point measurement the centriole is small it measures only about 0.3 to 0.5 micrometers whereas basal body measures about 500 micrometers large first location centriole near nucleus basal body below plasma membrane centriole small structure it gives 0.3 to it is 0.3 to 0.5 micrometers basal body is 500 micrometers next member there are only two centrioles there are only two centrioles which are arranged in perpendicular direction to each other there are only two centrioles but there are the number of basal body depends on number of cilia there are many cilia so there are many basal bodies because 
cilia and flagella originates from basal body if it is basal body from basal body cilia will be originated if it is basal body from this basal body flagella will be originated so basal body is the structure which gives rise to cilia and flagella so it's in obviously its number depends on cilia and flagella if there are more cilia there are more basal bodies if there is one flagella one basal body two flagella two basal bodies so the number of basal body depends on number of cilia and flagella so simply you can write numerous numerous in number okay next another difference is okay about their origin okay about their origin where they are present generally centrioles are present in all animal cells except mature rbc centrioles are present in all animal cells except in mature rbc there are no centrioles centrioles are present in fungi also centrioles are also present in algae also but centrioles are not present in higher plants and bacteria i'm explaining about their origin centrioles are present in all animal cells but in all in animal cells they are not present in mature rbc human rbc they are not present in human mature rbc they are present in fungi they are present in algae but they are absent in higher plants and bacteria simply to say where they are present animal cells algae fungi where they are absent mature human rbc higher plants and bacteria what about basal body and basal body very simple basal body is present in every cell which contains cilia and flagella so every cell which contains cilia or flagella first of all location centriole near nucleus basal body below plasma membrane size small 0.3 to 0.5 micrometers large 500 micrometers number of centrioles 2 number of basal bodies depends on number of cilia and flagella if cilia are more basal bodies are also more so numerous in number origin present in all animal cells present in fungi present in algae absent in mature human rbc absent in higher plants basal body basal body is present in all cells which contains cilia if cilia is there in a cell definitely basal body will be present next when it comes to function when it comes to function of centrioles and basal body centrioles helps in cell division they are involved in aster formation they are involved in aster formation and spindle formation during cell division centrioles are involved in cell division they are involved in aster formation and they are involved in spindle fibers formation during cell division so they took part in cell division and another important point centrioles also will divide always centrioles will divide or split during s phase of cell division it is very very important object to point centrioles will split during s phase of cell division what is the function of basal body 
base of body gives rise to cilia and flagella it is involved in the formation of cilia and flagella remember students the structure of centrion and base of body are same but their functions and a few points are different for them so this is about the structure of centrion and basal body and the difference between centrion and basal body i hope you understood the class thank you have a nice day